Let me talk about some things in the ball side defense to begin with. Okay, let me have just one guy up here with a ball. Get a guard up here with a ball. Anywhere on the perimeter, we want a guy to be in a squared stance and we want him to be head up. I've always told players that if you're playing against a kid, now I'm on offense, all right, I play against him, get in a stance, that's good, but now uh, change it, get an extended foot, okay, an extended foot. He's got that extended foot, and as soon as I see him come to me with that, I want to move him a little bit away from the extended foot, and then come back over the extended foot. I think the best way to drive is go over the extended foot. I always taught kids on offense to drive the extended foot. And a lot of guys get in a stance with that foot extended, usually the inside foot. I wanted a squared stance. As he moves either way, I'm ready to go with him. I don't have to drop step. If my outside foot is my extended foot and he goes, I have to drop step and now he's got a path to go somewhere. So in playing on the perimeter, on the ball side, the first thing that I want is a squared up stance. The second thing that I want is to force a ball to go toward the corner. Maybe I overplay him with my squared up stance just a little bit because I want to try and channel the ball toward the corner. I, Abe Lemons made one of the great comments and Abe was never credited with how smart a coach he was. He's one of the funniest guys that ever lived. But he had a very simple deal on defense. Give him the corner shot. Well, think about that. It's probably the most difficult outside shot there is, the corner shot. So why not force everybody to the corner on the perimeter and make them take the ball to the side? And that's the approach that we want on the ball side. Now. I'm going to go quickly then to the help side. Let me have somebody over here in the forward spot. Okay, now you're up about foul line extended. Now, we're going to try and make it tough for him to get the ball, but the one thing we have to be most careful about, I think, is the back cut. And we can't get up, particularly if this is a back cutting team and he comes in a little tighter, like they're running their offense on the three-point line. I come up and he makes one step out and then he goes to the bucket, I'm going to have a tough time covering this. So again, we want to maybe get that hand up in here, but I want to make sure that from this position, if he tries to back cut, I can open up and go with it. That I don't have to get caught up in here. I don't get caught up in here where I'm above him. I'm right in here. And now I'm playing him. Maybe I extend my foot a little bit because he doesn't have the ball. But if the ball comes to him, and maybe I've had... Now I want to square up right away. And I want to try and get him to go toward the corner. Now I wouldn't care whether this was zone or man-to-man. -man. I would want to push the ball toward the corner just as much as I could. The more I could get the ball in the corner, the more I think we're going to be okay uh, defensively. I, I draw a line from the middle of the floor to the basket. 
and and the side the ball is on, I ingeniously call it the ball side. Whichever side of the floor the ball is on, that's ball side. We've got this center line, this imaginary center line. We got ball side, help side. The side where the ball is, their job is to try to channel the ball toward the corner. The help side's job is to try and be there to help against the drive. Now, I don't think a team, one of the things that I watch doing the TV stuff, I don't think teams play very good help side defense. I think kids get to watching the game, they're, they're guarding somebody that doesn't have the ball. Uh, I see so many baskets scored because of the drive and the fact that there is no help available there. So we're going to set up this rule, and I think this has to be a part of defense whether it's zone or man-to-man. -man. Midline, anywhere on the ball side. Let me have five guys up here, same color, so you're our offense. Hustle, let's go, let's go. Somebody's in the post, get down in the medium post, get two guards up here, come up here at midcourt. All right, now, the first, go back. The first thing I have to decide is this. I have to decide how far out can we pick up these guys. I think that if you're gonna press, you gotta be very careful. You can press bad teams, but can you press good teams? That's why they're good, they beat the press. Now, how far are you gonna extend your defense? I think that depends on how quick your players are, how much they can cover. Not something that you've read or watched or dreamed up because you want them to play full court defense. There are not many players that can play full court defense at any level. So where are we going to pick up? Well, to me, the last line of resistance where we have to pick up is one step above the three-point line. So this is where we're going to pick up. When we play against a team and I check relative quickness, the quickness of their offense against the quickness of our defense, that's going to determine how far out we pick up. I've never been one to pick up full court because I think good ball handlers, I think it's an offensive advantage. And a lot of people would obviously disagree with that, but you can press teams that aren't very good. You know, Pete Newell and I used to talk about that and he got me to really think about that. As the season goes on, the good teams get better and better with the ball and the more difficult it becomes to press. So I've always been a half-court defensive guy. We're gonna pick up as far out as I think we can and still exert pressure and contain people. All right, now, let me have a white shirt up here on a ball. All right, now, you're gonna pick up right here. He's gonna come into you, you're gonna come across midcourt. All right, now, your job is to pick him up, squared up, get in a stance, Try and channel him toward the corner. If he tries to come over to get to the opposite side on the dribble, you're gonna to try to get in, that's it. Now try to get him going to the corner, get those hands out in front of in front of you, up in here, in front of your, that's it, but don't foul. All right, now, he comes back to, you're there. But now you get him going here, you're just trying, you've got a good position right now trying to slide and move to get him going toward the, going toward the corner, okay? All right, now let's come back a minute. Let me have a defensive man on, a, on the forward. Okay, now, you're gonna be in, in a semi-contesting position. You're gonna be here, so your hand is up in here, and if he does get the ball, make the pass, come out and get it, you're in position where you can still square up, okay? All right, now, let's put it back on top. All right, now, we're gonna cover ball side and then I'll go to help side. Let's say that you make a fake to the middle and he overcommits and you come back. All right, now it's your job, ball side help. This is more important than anything we can do on defense is stop the ball. My thinking with, with players on defense, again, I don't. it doesn't make any difference to me what the defense is. The most important thing in the game is the ball. And you've got to know where the ball is. If you don't know where the ball is, you can't play defense. I try to teach that all five players 
Their responsibility is to stop the basketball. You're not on defense, you're playing defense. And your goal is to stop the basketball. That is your major job. And I don't see a lot of good help side defense play right now. The good teams, Duke plays it, Syracuse plays it in its zone. But a lot of teams just don't play good help side defense. There are too many baskets scored. Driving the ball down the lane where there's no help. Or driving baseline where help doesn't get there. So on the ball side, there is help. Particularly if we in our scouting report have said, this kid really is a good, we got to stop this kid. So you get back where you were. All right. As he starts to get inside the three point line, now you've got to help. All right. If you can make a move where he picks it up, then you have to recover. You help, you recover. And now we're back where we are. Get a defensive postman up here. Now with this, you can't get anxious and get over top of him because now that's a release for him, okay? He gets that, I'd rather have a bounce pass than up there. Put it right at his knee. That's it, good. Now hold it, when you get it, let me show you something. He's gonna throw me the ball. Okay, now, I want you to tell me whether I'm harder to guard for you in this position or when I get the ball, I'm in this position. Which way do you think I'm harder to guard? High or low? I think so too. So make it a habit. When you get it, get down. So when you have the ball in the post, I always like our guys to make a fake to whichever side you're on. Now you weren't up quite that high. But if I can move you just a half a step, then look what I've got. I've got a pretty good route to the bucket. You've given me that angle that we want in the post. But again, if you're right behind me, and I move, you don't go. You just hold your position. And if I put it on the floor, you're still right where you're gonna be able to play me. But a lot of guys will try to play on the high side or the low side, depending upon where the ball is. And I think that gives our postman a real chance to move with it. If I can move you a little bit to the baseline, then I'm coming right back to the middle with the ball. So I want you to get it at your knee. I want the pass to come to his knee. All right, now, the pass has come in. All right, now hold it. Now we know that this is a good postman, okay? We've talked about this. As that pass is coming in, you're coming off. And you're coming in to make sure he doesn't have room to move. All right, now, when that happens and the pass comes out, you've got to recover. But you recover low and short. You don't come out here flying and go by him. You recover low and short. So if he does go up to take the shot, you can move up into him and get a hand up here. Okay? All right, let's just see that little sequence. You go you go half speed. Help, help, help. Recover. Reco now make your move. All right, good. Get back. Get back. All right, good, good. Now, if we're doing a really good job inside on their postman, you don't have to do what? You don't have to help, but you've got to know where the ball is all the time. Now, from an offensive standpoint, the ball has gone in. I'll, let me take this spot a second. You've gone in to help. All right, it comes back to me. Now, hold it. Just stay right where you were. All right, now, when it comes back to me, I think the least used thing in offensive basketball and the most important thing there is on the perimeter is the shot fake. Now, I've had guys work on teams that I coach, like the Olympic team or the Pan American team, and they saw the amount of time that I spent on the shot fake offensively, and they were just amazed. But they were even more amazed at the results of the shot fake. I'm telling you that the kid playing defense, coming out on me when the pass comes, is trying to, trying to get up in the air. The kind of athletes that play today, he's trying to block the shot. If I give him that shot fake and I get him up in the air or he goes by me, then I've got a real good shot. 
I've got a chance to drive the ball to the bucket. He comes over. I get a little bounce pass in here. I, I can't emphasize enough to you, and I'm going to leave it go at this, but I think every day you should use the shot fake. The pass is made, bring it back on top. Okay, now make, make the pass down. Any pass that's made, go ahead. We immediately jump to the ball. You got the wrong hand up. Jump to the ball with the outside hand in the passing lane. Right here, get down, get your ass down, get your feet squared. a boy, that's better. Can you see? That's it, good. All right, now, get down. Now, if he comes this way, now, what do you know right away? What do you know about help right away? You got it right here, okay? So maybe you cheat a little bit to the outside. We force him back in here. Now you help. You're into it. Bang. All right. Now we have a choice here. And I've already told you guys that we are going to trap or we're not going to trap. You guys already know that. So when we help out, now this is zone or man to man, I don't care. When we help out, you've already been told that we're going to trap or we're not going to trap. This time we've been told to trap. So you guys are going to get into him with your bodies. He's picked it up. I don't want you trying to slap the ball away from him unless you have a clear cut chance to do so. I don't want him to go to the free throw line because we've made a dumb play. Okay? It's your body. He has no dribble left. The ball comes back to your man. You recover. Low and short. Not a hand up. Let me show you why I don't want your hand up. You guard me with your hand up. Let's see what happens. But now, when you recover, get square. Get those hands out. So, I, I, which way can I go? Well... We've been stopped here, so maybe we go to the other side. But you recover low, you recover short, and you're square without a hand up. Because you either extend that foot, go ahead and extend it. That's when I drive that foot. You get your hand up in the air. That's when I'm going to drive the raised hand. Okay? All right. So this is the guts of help or ball side defense. We're going to try. If I've got a really quick kid and 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 he can keep him from getting the ball, then we're going to fight. We're going to play in here. We're going to try and contest him. This can be the bottom guy in a 2-3 zone. If he comes out on a ball and he's quick enough and tough enough to really fight this guy, then we'll try to keep him from getting the ball. But I'm not going to put a kid out here that's going to get beat on quickness. You know, as I said, there are some things that we might like to do as a coach. But our kids aren't capable of doing them. A full court press, a lot of outside shooting. You know, we have to pay attention to just what our kids can do. When I called the guy from Alaska when the season was over, when I called Eric, and I said, Eric, what was your final record? He said, Coach, we won 19 games. And I said, then you didn't press, did you? He said, no, we didn't. So... He presses, they win 10 games because his kids can't press. Well, I think what we're doing here, kids can do. So on the ball side in defense, we have defensive help. That pass comes, you jump to the ball, he comes back to the middle. I've told you to trap. All right, we go make the trap right there. All right, this time I tell you we don't trap. The pass comes. I say, we don't trap, you're there, he comes, you, now you get back, he picks it up, you get back, good, good, but you're there to help. All right, now, we bring the ball back on top, he comes down, bring it down a little bit. All right, now you get right here, and you're able to feed it inside. All right, now, we want you to be back to help. Right away, you're going on the ball, so you get into him, make him throw it back out. All right, now, you shot fake, and you're going to get some shots out of it. You don't pay any attention to his shot fake because have you been told to come out high? No. You've been told to what? You've been told to come out low. Have you been told to come out tight or short? short? Short. That's good. That's what we want. Now if he takes a shot, you can get up into him. 
Get that hand up, go at him, get your body into him, screw around with his follow through a little bit. But if you come out high, great chance to drive you, shot fake and drive. If you come out like a, like a screaming bullet and go past him, run, jump up in the air, there he's gone. Low and short in recovery. All right, now you're out here on the side. Okay, now you're set up in here. Now you make a good fake to the middle. That's the wrong foot. Make the foot on the direction. You, that's a boy, good, hold it. Now you overreact to the fake. All right, now as he goes, you're going to drive baseline now. Make your fake. Go baseline. All right, now hold it. Keep going. You're there to help. Now, maybe, maybe, and with you two guys, just physically, it looks to me like we can switch. Okay? And I'm going to talk about the switch in a moment. But that is an option for us. All right? But you have got to help here to take away that pass. And maybe... If he backs out, you got to go with And maybe we have switched. Maybe we don't particularly want to, but maybe we have. But your job, your job is to get there to, to help on a baseline drive. Take it, put it back out again with the ball. You get back in your position. All right, now, hold it up just a second. All right? The only way he can prevent you from helping is if he slides down. And go ahead. Now bring it. He slide. Go ahead. Bring it. Baseline. He slide down. Slide down. No. Yeah. Now. All right. This is jammed up everything. But now look what can happen here. Go ahead. Take it again. No. No. You're back out on top. Set up. All right. Now this time you're up on the high side of it. All right. He makes a good fake. He drives. He spins. And there's no help. See, we've put you in a position where. He's got an angle, but it's not just an angle to go to the bucket to rebound or take a shot. He's got an angle to block you out on the drive.